You may be wondering where my review video of Armed Air Forces is. That game has too many issues right now to be reviewed and it may not be realistic enough, so I'm giving it a chance to fix its issues and improve its realism. This is my first Carrier Landing HD video as well. You can expect Carrier Landing HD to be a regular game on this channel from now on as I continue my transition away from Gunship's sequel World War II. Stay tuned until the end of this video because there are uh, some details I, I will be sharing about multiplayer at the end. This is the new 60 FPS option. This option lets you run the game at twice the amount of frames as before, so it was only 30 FPS before. The developer said that this is only going to be available on A13 and A14 Bionic on the newer iPhones and the iPad Air 4. But now, it can theoretically be enabled on any of the iOS devices that the game supports. However, in order for this to actually work, you need to restart the game, and that will also apply for the resolution changes. Resolution, as you can see in these settings, is the biggest detriment to game performance. You're seeing a screenshot here of my settings on the 2017 iPad Pro. 75% um, native resolution and full textures and sh real-time shadows. That gives me the best combination of near-perfect performance and graphics. Now, if you're on a newer device or a more powerful device, you may not have to worry about this, but I'm just putting it out here for those who have older devices. The last couple of days have also introduced a new engine model, as in how the engine thrust is generated, how the thrust to weight ratios are calculated. I did not manage to do any scientific tests to compare with the older version, but I can definitely tell you that in this new version, the engine acceleration is far more realistic than it used to be uh, in older patches. It definitely feels more like a real plane. I'm showing this flight test of the F-18C Hornet with 75% fuel and a fully clean load versus 75% fuel and a full load of AIM-9X Sidewinders and AIM-120 AMRAMs. The F-A-18C is 20% faster when you don't have all those missiles and AMRAMs mounted. So that's all you need to know, and these changes should definitely apply across the board. In the more recent of these two patches, the game recalculated how tensor inertia, also known as the moment of inertia, is calculated. Now, in, without going too technical, the planes across the board, they all seem to be less maneuverable as I, have test, as I am testing here with the F-A-18C once again. At both low and high speeds, I am getting a slower roll rate, and I'm also less maneuverable. That is because, according to the recalculation in the patch notes, the planes now have more mass, as in the planes feel like they're having more mass. The matchups will stay unchanged because this is a fundamental change that applies across the board to every single plane, but it may become more dangerous to initiate a rolling sea source at low speed, which will be one, which is one of the changes how it can be applied to the real world um, in a nutshell. So that's how you can understand how the tensor inertia works in the game. The first of these two patches had a couple of bugs, but they were resolved very quickly in the most recent patch. The F-18C's gun had 57,800 rounds instead of 578 rounds as it was supposed to have, and you were not able to shoot down drones without the gun. However, on the bright side, you guys uh, probably took an opportunity to practice deflection shooting. I still have a lot of trouble trying to do deflection shooting in this game, even with the radar gun sight. It seems that it is very reliable at close range, but it is not necessarily something you may rely on at longer ranges. Now, I would also like to offer some feedback on the 30mm GSH-30 cannon on the J-15. It definitely needs a sound change. It's currently using the same sound as the M61, and we also need to have that sound changed on the M61. It doesn't really sound like the real thing. It just sounds like a... Like a farting noise. I'm gonna be... to be blunt. I'll leave you this video I made more than a year ago of the FA-18 Hornet game in which I edited some DCS sounds in. But aside from that, 
I think we can all agree that the M61 sound needs to be changed and the 30 millimeter cannon should also get its uh, unique sound. I wanted to dump as much information as I could about multiplayer from the developer himself, but I only got answers to a couple of questions. First one I asked is when will multiplayer be available and will we get fighting AI, fighter AI to practice? He answered, it'll be available this month. The development of the fighting AI is indeed very complicated. If it can improve its fighting skills through evolution, it'll be even more complicated. I really want to develop this kind of AI in the future. I think this will be a very good AI to practice um, that will ap apply your s fighting skills to the real world because this AI will just keep changing and it's basically machine learning to that's making the AI's behavior way more like hum like a human than and like other games. I originally only planned to support 1v1 dogfight in the first version of multiplayer, but after the test I found that this is too professional. High ranking player has huge advantage to newbies. Now I also plan to support deathmatch mode with missiles so everyone can have fun from it. And the other question is what's uh, the capacity of players in the room? It can support up to 16 players but because the development's not being completed, the maximum number of players depends on the 300 messages per second per limit per room. The number of players may be limited to 10 players in each room. So in the worst case scenario, or initially at least, we're going to have up to 10 players at first. But 60 players should be um, more than enough to do a lot of stuff with. So I would look forward to flying in a pretty huge room, and I hope... It's going to be a very well-optimized uh, multiplayer experience, unlike WoW, which is quite laggy when there are lots of people in the room. Unless you have a pretty good device. So, please make sure that this multiplayer is definitely wait worth the wait. Yes, I don't really showcase the new engine sound, because I'm sure it's an obvious thing. And the new flight control system optimization, I haven't been able to test it yet, because I haven't been able to tinker with the FCS and CLHD that much. But aside from that, I just want to make a new approach for the news videos uh, that's much shorter than the WAD news videos, make it more efficient so people can come to these videos and hear what really matters and what you need to know. I'm looking forward to fly with all of you in the multiplayer skies of Carrier Landing HD when multiplayer releases and the more features that do get added to this game, especially that will affect multiplayer gameplay and make it more like a real thing. The more variety of content that there will be available uh, in the future, tutorial videos are definitely going to come to my channel related to this game. So that's all for today and hope to see you in the skies.